like in one example, let's say you don't want to kill animals, and, but you, uh, so you you have a humane mousetrap in your basement. Okay, why not? You don't want to snap the neck of the mouse. That's that's cruel. You and you and you like animals, right? So you save the mouse. You got to check on it every few days because they dry out quickly if you trap it. So. And so what do you do when you catch it? What, what do they do? Release them. Release it back into the wild. Guaranteeing the mouse gets eaten whole by an owl or pecked apart by all manner of woodland predators between 9 and 18 months of its life. So the safest thing to do with your mouse is to leave it in your basement. <laughs> if, that's, if you really care about animal life and the mouse managed to get into your basement... Leave it there. It'll live up to six years in I, your basement. I lived in Colorado for a while next to an ashram, and I was visiting the ashram and talking to the woman who runs it, and she sprayed raid all over these ants. And I go, what are you doing? And she's like, well, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we, we have to address the fact that we have an infestation of insects. I'm like, you just mass killed <laughs> all these living beings. Right. And with my, poison from the sky. <laughs> and you did it in front of me. Aerial assault. <laughs> while you're espousing the benefits of Buddhism and oh. meditation. and Yeah, so people kind of cherry pick. Yeah. And, and I understand it, but... And I don't, it's odd. I don't mind if someone cherry picks as long as they're completely self-aware. Most of people it. aren't. And by the way, the home that where you're saving the mouse... Uh, I did a, a rough calculation. It's it's probably made from the wood of about 50 trees. Mm. Each tree could have lived 100 years but didn't because it was cut down to make your home. The the two by you know the studs, the, the two by fours, the the floorboards, the the wall panels, the you know the the siding. And each of those trees was home to birds and insects and fungus and squirrels and uh, and every day of that tree's life, via photosynthesis, it created 15 times the mass of the mouse in breathable oxygen. So I ask you, who do you think nature cares more about? Hmm. The tree or your one ounce mouse? Probably the tree. I'm thinking. And some trees live a thousand years. Well, have you paid attention to some of the new research that's being done about how trees communicate with each other? I'll get other? to that. Yeah, I'll get to that. That's mm. in that's in that chapter, the mm. meatarians and vegetarians chapter. So, so trees are fascinating. Mm. I've heard people say, well, the mouse has a beating heart, and the tree does not, or plants do not, and animals do. And I said to my, well, let me think this through. If you cloak a tree, does it not suffocate? If you cut a tree, does it not bleed? If you cut off its nutrients at the base, does it not wither and die? Well, when they're aware they're being eaten, they release plant defense I'm chemicals. There. I'm getting there. All I'm saying is the tree gets nutrients from the soil to the topmost leaf. It does it not for want of a beating heart. It does it in spite of not having one. Right. It has a circulation. It just has a different it's where I get way my, of life. It, it's, it's where I get my maple syrup from, tree blood. So, let us, so to fault a tree or plant life for not having a beating heart, when it's not that they need one and don't have one, it's that they don't need one and never wanted one. Now, you're talking about the, so you're talking about the mycelium. So mm -hmm. this is a interconnected network. It's a fungal, fungal network. Uh, underfoot in a forest where it connects multiple kingdoms of life. Uh, there are four kingdoms. You might have learned that there were two. We've upped it since then. Those two kingdoms are still intact, but like I said, there, now there's more. It's embedded in a larger truth. There's the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, fungal kingdom, and then we have a kingdom that includes all of the bacteria and archaea and other, other microscopic life forms. And so, here's an interesting fact. I... I Lost sleep for a week over this, ready? If you look at the common ancestor between fungus and animals, because the tree of life has ultimately has one taproot, 
okay? And as it splits, it speciates, and you get all these things. The diversity of life on Earth is, is enabled by the fact that life can speciate, okay? You look at the common ancestor between animals and fungus, the common ancestor between humans and mushrooms split later than the common ancestor, than its common ancestor split with green plants. What that means is we and mushrooms are more alike than either we or mushrooms are to green plants. Mm. Well, mushrooms breathe oxygen. All I'm saying is you, you grill a portobello mushroom? What's the first word people use to describe it? Vegetarian. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> no, they talk about mushrooms tasting meaty. Yeah. Yeah, meaty. Meaty mushroom. Mm -hmm. 